most true crime dramas and documentaries on Netflix are based on American stories, which is great. I love them. But when I saw The Investigator, a British crime story, I jumped at the chance to see it. I really needed it to be good because I'd watched several American true crime dramas back to back. I had to watch a really good documentary. This is, to me, a really good documentary. However, I have one massive problem with it, which I will explain towards the end. There will be a few spoilers in this, but I will give you a brief overview of what this is about, just in case you want to know whether or not you should see it, which, by the way, I recommend you do. So, non-spoiler, Mark Williams Thomas is an investigator, a private investigator, who, by the way, I think is great. It's always important that you have the narrator or the investigator leading the documentary to be really likeable and, and to be really engaging, and he definitely was. I you know, I couldn't have asked for a better investigator in terms of presentation. And this looks at Russell Cosley, who is currently in prison. Actually, I say he's currently in prison. I believe he was up for parole last month. I had a quick Google and uh, he was up for parole, but I'm not sure if that was granted. So I could say some things in this documentary that are no longer true, because this is from 2016. Either way, Russell Cosley is or was imprisoned for the murder of his wife, Carol Pacman. However, there has never been a body found, which is very unusual. Uh, if you're not familiar with the criminal justice system in the UK, most people go to prison for murder once there is a body or evidence of the death. But Sam, Carol's daughter, comes forward and asks Mark for help to solve this case. And obviously the, the four episodes in this see Mark digging deeper into this story and those involved uh, with particular focus on Russell, Sam's father, and Patricia Cosley. Uh, Russell's very hard to describe how she is in one word. Basically it was like he was having an affair with her and then Carol went missing and then they kind of became as if they were man and wife but obviously Russell was still still married because you know he maintained that Carol was still alive so of course he couldn't be a widower. This is brilliantly presented. There, you know, it, it utilises the occasional audio recording from back in the 1980s, uh, or rather the 90s, when it was actually reported as a more of a murder case than a missing persons case. But for the most part, because that doesn't really exist in large quantities, it uses a lot of reconstructions. I think the casting... If the majority of the people involved was good. I wasn't particularly taken with the casting of Patricia. Very well acted by Frances Miller, but I think she was too pretty. I think the actual Patricia was a lot more hardy and rugged and not as pretty as the actress playing her. But that's a small minor thing. And, okay, from now there will be spoilers because I am going to look into the story itself and I'm very keen to know if you have any theories. So... Spoilers from now. Sam comes home and with her father and there's a note on the table from her mother basically saying she's had enough and she's left and her wedding ring is there. And for a little while, it is just a missing persons case. But eventually, I think at the beginning of the 90s, the documentary does timelines very well. It will constantly remind you of what the times were. So you don't need to kind of worry about keeping track of that. But eventually it was reported as a you know, more of a, a murder case, and at that point, things begin to go very odd. Russell and Patricia go to Canada and other places, and Patricia's working under Carol's name, and then there's a fraud insurance scam, or insurance fraud, for Russell's apparent death after a yacht trip, and there are so many things in this that make it so intricate and confusing and you just want to hit your head off the wall saying, why is this so complex? Why can we not get straight answers? And I really feel for Sam because I can't imagine what it would be like not knowing where your mother is and not knowing whether she was dead or alive. Because, I, I, to be honest, as I said, spoilers so I can say this with, with confidence without spoiling it, I genuinely believed for at least the first two episodes that this documentary was going to reveal Russell's innocence and that Carol had actually just left. 
it happens, you know, it does happen quite a lot. Spouses just can't cope with the family dyna dynamic. It's very, you know, bitter and, and often violent and they just leave because it's the only way out that they can see. So I genuinely thought that this is where that was heading. And I really hoped it. However, obviously, we eventually realise that that's not the case. And I got so frustrated at the end of this. And this is the one thing I did not like. It's not the documentary's fault, because if there are no answers to have, then there are no answers to show. But it really bugged me that after four episodes, so just under four hours of being fully absorbed in this documentary... We never actually found out the truth. And that really bugged me because I really want to know what happened. And I genuinely thought this was going to uncover that. It obviously, um, you know, turned over a lot of stones and explored a lot of things. We have Russell's confession about burning the body. It looked at whether or not that was possible. And it was. But then he retracted that and said he didn't do that. And I just want to get Russell and bang his head against a wall and just make him say the truth but then after all the lies and deceit I wouldn't believe him anyway unless there was physical evidence I feel like it's probably possible that he did burn the body and that there is no physical evidence but I don't know it's it's kind of really frustrating either way I feel like now he had something to do with her death I don't think for a second that he would admit to the murder I know occasionally people do admit to murders that they haven't committed, but more often than not, that's when they've committed other murders or they've assaulted other people and they just want the attention and eventually they will retract it, but it doesn't last for 20 years. So I don't believe, although it's not impossible, I don't believe in this instance that he didn't murder her. I just don't necessarily believe that it happened the way he says it did. Well, then maybe it did. And Patricia's involvement? I don't believe her. I'd like to think she's as innocent as she says she is. But if she is as innocent as she says she is, then she is very stupid and very naive and very blind to the world around her. But, you know, it is what it is. And I just hope that Sam gets answers one day. And also her grandson, who's also very active in trying to, first of all, I noticed he was trying to stop the parole of Russell. I don't know if that was successful. And also trying to find Carol. I feel like at this stage, if Carol was alive and out there, she'd have come forward. Hopefully. Especially after the documentary was released and you know, half of the Netflix watching population is talking about this. I'd like to think she'd have the decency to come forward. Or to at least get some kind of message to her daughter or the investigator. So for her character, it's probably better that she's no longer here. Because it doesn't really sully her personality. But it's a heartbreaking story. Very frustrating that we don't get answers. But it's not over. Russell's still alive. Patricia's still alive. Sam's obviously still alive. Carol probably not. But, you know, they're... There are, there's more than nobody who knows the answers to this and it's not over yet. We can still get answers. Sam can still get the answers she needs. People just need to start telling the truth. <laughs>